parliament has been voting on Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's picks for a new government. It's seen as a key test for the Iranian president after his disputed re-election back in June. As voting wrapped up a short while ago in Tehran this Thursday, three out of his 21-member lineup had been rejected, among them two women. For some immediate analysis of this story, I'm joined now in the studio by Owen Fairclough from our International Affairs Desk. Owen, if we look at this and take a sort of step back, a three out of 21, it is a slap on the wrist for Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Absolutely spot on, Marcus. In fact, Ahmadinejad thought he'd had all but two of those posts sewn up. The parliament, as you mentioned, actually rejected three of his choices. Those were Ahmadinejad's choices for the posts of energy, education and social health. Now, those last two ministries, education and social health, were to be occupied by women. A big, big step for Iran. This would have been the first time in the Islamic Republic's short history or 30-year history that three women could have been at the helm of the ministry. As I say could, because two of them were rejected. Having said that, Iran has scored a first. Uh, the health minister is now at Mazia Vahid Dasjari. She's Iran's first female minister. She will, as I say, take the health portfolio. It tells you an awful lot, Marcus. We have this wave of optimism during the presidential elections about women's rights, about this perhaps being a new dawn for women. We mm -hmm. have Mir Hussein Massabi's wife being the sort of figurehead, if you like, for female voters. Now we've seen the reality of that. The parliament actually saying no thanks very much to having three women uh, in government. Now, if we look, at, take a look at another candidate uh, who was actually cleared as well, it's uh, Ahmad Vahidi, the defence minister. From a foreign perspective, that must be quite extraordinary, seeing that he's been suspected for to be part of a, a bomb attack back, very much back in 1994 in Argentina. Very much so. 1984, Marcus, this was in Buenos Aires. You're absolutely right. Uh, uh, Vahidi has been wanted by Interpol since 2007 in connection with a bombing on a Jewish centre in the Argentine capital. At the time, he was head of a a branch of the Revolutionary Guard, uh, 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 the Revolutionary Guard, of course, ultimately loyal to the President and to the Ayatollah. Now, Parliament very much liked that choice when they were debating this yesterday. There were chants in the chamber of uh, death to Israel. So that tells you again mm -hmm. uh, the feeling there. One choice they didn't like, and is worth mentioning, is the reappointment of Foreign Minister Manisha Mataki. He was Foreign Minister under Ahmadinejad's first term. He'd been slated an awful lot for effectively leading uh, Iran into diplomat international diplomatic isolation. He was blamed for the fact, for example, that Ahmadinejad has never been invited by an EU member state as a guest. They thought that was uh, Mataki's fault. And again, there were chants today, uh, or I should I say jeers, when his uh, appointment was confirmed by the parliament. So, as you mentioned, it's a big test for Ahmadinejad. You might say he's passed it, possibly, but he'll still have to go back to the drawing board now and decide who those three other uh, ministers are going to be. All right, we'll be keeping our eyes on this story in the coming hours and the coming days. But for now, Owen Fairclough from our International Affairs Desk. Thanks very much.